What? Home more homework? What? Thanksgiving break. Wait, there's more homework. It's one through Depends on whether you're paying attention. Okay, so let's go through this. There's a little bit more. Don't worry. So I got to give you guys the last t last um, last directions to do your problems. All right. So Sadiq, this is one thing that you kind of missed off on the last ones. So we talked about how to find the value of c to complete the square, right? So that's going to be part of solving by completing the square. And I'll get to that first point in a second. The first thing, ladies and gentlemen, we need to remember when completing the square, all right, is always we have the set equal to 0. So therefore, the first thing I would look into see is can we factor this? What two numbers multiply to give you negative 6, but then add to give you positive 1? 2 and 3. We can actually factor this, right? So this is actually a factorable problem. However, what we're going to do is we're going to practice completing the square. So we've got to follow our method. And here's the steps. The first thing is understanding that all quadratics can be written in this form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So if you guys remember, the first step is to do b divided by 2 and square it. Okay. So you do b divided by 2 squared. So I have 1 half divided by 2 squared. 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. I'm sorry, 1 divided by 2. Sorry. I'm thinking ahead. 1 divided by 2 squared is 1 fourth. Right? Thank you. Correct? Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then that equals 1 fourth. Then what we're going to do is you're going to, um, we're going to add and subtract 1 fourth. So if you guys remember this, let's look at a statement. x plus 4 equals 2. Right? If you're going to do something to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side of the equation. Right? So what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take this 1 fourth and I'm going to add it and subtract it on opposite ends of the equation. Since I'm solving, that's what I'm going to want to do. You could also add and subtract it on the same side, but I want to add it on both sides of the equation. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite my equation. So step two is now you're going to write x squared plus x plus 1 fourth okay, minus 6 equals 1 fourth. So I added the 1 fourth on both sides. However, if you guys remember, remember it said find the value c that completes the square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over on this, over on this edge. Or I'm, just, I'm going to put the first three terms in parentheses. Now, what does completing the square do? If you guys want to think of completing the square, here's my best definition of completing the square. It creates a perfect square trinomial. That's why we complete the square. It completes a perfect square trinomial. What is a perfect square trinomial? Right? Remember, it's a, when you have a perfect square binomial that multiplies by itself, creates a perfect square trinomial. So we need to look at this and say, what two numbers multiply to give you 1 fourth, but then add to give you 1 half? What number that's exactly the same from each other? Okay. If you guys remember your first step, remember 1 through 8 on your homework? You guys practice these over and over and over. You guys should get this is going to be x plus 1 half squared. Because what's 1 half times 1 half gives you 1 fourth. Yeah. 1 half plus 1 half gives you 1. Yeah. Right? Full fractions, I know. That's, a, that's why that was a good problem to pick. So therefore, I have minus 6 equals 1 fourth. Now, the reason why we, again, we complete the square, ladies and gentlemen, how many x's do I have? 1. Can I solve with my x's by using my inverse operations? Yeah, since I only have 1x, I can use my inverse operations. If I had 2x's, like I did up here, I'd probably have to do my factoring. But we couldn't factor it. So what we can do, what completing square allows us to do, is allows us to create a perfect square trinomial so we can solve without factoring. So therefore, when you have something that's prime, now you have a way that you can create a perfect square trinomial to solve. So therefore, there is really no thing as prime. We can always find the values of it. So therefore, now we just use inverse operations. So you add 6. Add 6. 
Therefore, you have x plus 1 half squared equals 6 plus 1 fourth. So you're going to have 25 over 6. Wait, wait, 25 over 4, I'm sorry. How did it turn from 1 fourth to 1 half? 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Yeah. You add 1 fourth on the left side, and you add 1 fourth on the right side. Yep. Then, then this is a perfect square trinomial. So this can be rewritten as x plus 1 half squared. The 6, OK. Right? Multiply by 4 over 4. OK? We're going to get some fraction practice, don't worry. So therefore, we're going to add 25 over 4. Now, so therefore, this is 25 over 4. So again, we just use our inverse operations. Take the square root, take the square root. x plus 1 half equals plus or minus um, 5 over 2. Right? So therefore, since it equals 5 over 2, you can rewrite it as x plus 1 half equals 5 over 2. And x plus 1 half equals negative 5 over 2. So you solve for x minus 1 half on both sides. And you get x equals 4 divided by 2, which means x equals 2. And then here you get x equals negative 6 over 2, which means x equals negative 3. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we talked about from the start this was factorable, right? Would factoring make a lot more sense to do this? Absolutely. However, you're going to have problems on your homework that you can't factor it. So that's why you guys have to know the steps. And you also have to know how to deal with your fractions. Okay? So that is completing the square. What a fun operation. <laughs>